Almost a year ago, I made a video on Takashi Kotegawa, aka BNF, Japan's modern day Jesse Livermore, and holder of an impressive investment track record with gains of 1.2 million percent in less than a decade. In that video, I focused on the fat finger trade that earned him a return of close to 60%, or $17 million. After all, were it not for this momentous blunder on the part of a trader at Mizuho Securities, who somehow jumbled up an order to sell one share of JCOM stock for 610,000 yen, and ended up selling 610,000 shares for 1 yen each, the legend of BNF probably would have never received mainstream coverage. Yet that particular trade is just one in a long string of outliers that characterize BNF's august trading career. Today we take a look at some of these outliers, at some of the more irregular aspects of Takashi Kotegawa's trading career, and attempt to verify the veracity of the claims behind his real estate dealings. Topic number one, position sizing. The main takeaway here is that BNF doesn't do position sizing. Very much like Jesse Livermore almost a century earlier and over 6,700 miles away, media reports and interviews indicate Takashiko Tegawa trades purely on instinct and without fixed rules for when to sell or when to cut his losses short. He also doesn't limit each position to a percentage, say 2-3% to of his available capital, nor does he ever mention, for example, the Kelly criterion for optimal position sizing. Case in point, during the events of the JCOM Fat Finger incident, BNF plowed around $33.5 million into the trade, or about half the value of his trading account at the time. A single instance isn't enough to prove a trend, however, another one of his trades at the height of the great financial crisis of 08 allows us to start establishing somewhat of a pattern. The date is October 28, 2008. The Nikkei had fallen precipitously over the preceding week and was trading at around 7100. BNF went on a bit of a buying spree that morning building up a position worth around $64.8 million in around 90 names. Initially, the position moved against him as the Nikkei broke the 7,000 yen mark, but thankfully the market rallied during the afternoon and into the following day, recovering back to the 8,200 level. According to BNF, he made about $12 million on the trade, or 20% in local currency terms. In that same interview, he says he lost about $5 million on October 10th, 2008. So to me, this indicates this wasn't a one-off bet, but one in a string of very large trades. This interview, published on the November 14th, 2008 edition of the weekly Asahi, contains a number of interesting nuggets, like the fact BNF invested around $6.5 million in Lehman Brothers, just two days before the company went under. This fits with his modus operandi, as he identified the opportunity for a rebound in Lehman stock which had dropped by 73% between the beginning of the year and late August 2008. Alas, the company went bankrupt, resulting in a 100% loss, and prompting BNF to reconsider his brief foray into the US stock market, citing the Lehman incident, currency risk, and high fees. I find this fascinating because you'd expect someone at his level to be using a professional brokerage account with a more favorable trading fee structure, or at least something more quote-unquote official, like interactive brokers. Assuming the person giving these interviews and making these TV appearances is the real Takashiko Tegawa, then I'd say this decision not to go pro is congruent with his rumored decision to turn down Masayoshi Son, 
the founder of the Japanese conglomerate SoftBank, as a potential client. It would appear BNF enjoys running his own money, but does not want to be beholden to other people. A decision I personally commend him for. Topic number two. Origin story. The fact he's turned down outside money is interesting, because his origin story as a trader involves legendary hedge fund manager Victor Niederhofer. Yes, BNF is actually an initialism for Victor Niederhofer, as the V sound is not native to the Japanese language. In late 1998, the NHK, Japan's BBC, so to speak, aired a four-part series about the world of finance. The first episode covering the spectacular fall from grace of legendary speculator Victor Niederhofer. Takashi Kotegawa apparently either watched the show in real time or through reruns, and was clearly inspired by the hedge fund manager's charisma. Despite the fact Niederhofer ended up costing his investors a good chunk of money, something in this 75-minute piece made Takashi Kotegawa want to try his hand at investing. Except he had no intention of starting his own hedge fund, nor of trading options on index futures. He would trade equities with his own money. Topic number three, real estate mogul. Fast forward to 2008, and Takashi Kotegawa had grown his net worth to a level beyond his wildest dreams. It was at this point that he decided to diversify into real estate by purchasing a commercial property conveniently located just a stone's throw away from JR Akihabara Station, a sort of hotspot for anime fans and computer-slash-electronics enthusiasts. The purchase was finalized in October 2008 for the amount of $90.2 million. Apparently, he sold the building to Tokyo Marine Private REIT Inc. around March 2018 for an estimated $112.8 million, a profit of 33.3% in local currency terms and excluding close to 10 years worth of rent payments, upkeep costs, inflation, etc. I was skeptical about this transaction when I first heard about it over a decade ago, and this sense of incredulity never really left me. Buildings have owners, so I reasoned following the paper trail would either confirm or invalidate Takashi Kotegawa's foray into real estate. BNF was also interviewed by TV personality Hiroshi Kume shortly following the purported purchase. The interview took place on the 10th floor, which at the time was occupied by the head office of the real estate service company, Dot R. I doubt anyone would go to such lengths as setting up an interview with an imposter BNF in a building purportedly owned by the legendary investor, but which in reality belonged to someone else entirely. The small influx of new account openings with Rakuten Securities BNF's broker of choice, and a blip in magazine sales would hardly have justified building such an intricate Potemkin village. In light of this, proving ownership of the building would indirectly corroborate the notion of Takashi Kotegawa, aka BNF, as the mild-mannered man shown on TV and in multiple magazine appearances. I was therefore determined to get to the bottom of it, Ownership information is publicly available through the land registry with the Legal Affairs Bureau, so I looked up the relevant property records for the Chomp Chomp Akihabara building. Lo and behold, the document does indeed show a change in ownership, first to one Takashi Kotegawa on October 16, 2008, and then 10 years later to Tokyo Marine. I'm still not fully convinced but I believe this constitutes decent circumstantial evidence. He later went on to purchase the Akiba Culture Zone building for around $213 million in 2011, and a plot of land in the Susukino district of Sapporo for an undisclosed amount. 
the land has been developed into a nine-story building, which counts a coffee shop and a hair salon as tenants. I also found articles detailing the purchase of a fourth property in Shibuya sometime around 2013. These purchases validate a simple extrapolation of his investment success beyond 2008, when he stopped giving interviews. Information is sparse, but given the amounts involved when it comes to his real estate dealings, I don't think it's a stretch to speculate Takashi Kotegawa might soon join Masayoshi Son of SoftBank in Forbes' annual list of the world's billionaires.